Uh, hi, I'm Christine Lemmer Weber. I am the executive director of the Sprightly Institute. Uh, we build decentralized network technology, um, I mean, which is not surprising given the webcamp. But um, my background is in decentralized social networks. Um, what Sprightly is doing today is actually building um, technology to be able to make it so that decentralized peer-to-peer -peer technology is the default thing you get when you do computer programming. Um, so we're trying to lower the barrier to entry on building secure distributed peer-to-peer -peer applications. So you can go to sprightly.institute. Um, we have software you can use today. We have um, Sprightly Goblins, which is our distributed programming environment. Um, we also have this thing called Hoot, since our stuff is written in this kind of um, not as popular today programming language named Scheme. It's in the category of languages named Lisps. Um, and uh, you can say, see I even say the word Lisp with a Lisp. But um, the, um, the nice thing about Hoot is that it compiles Scheme to WebAssembly so you're able to run it in the browser. And so the reason we have this in addition is that we're trying to bring our decentralized network tech to everyone. Right, and the place where everyone tends to be is in their browser every day, right? Um, so the, the tech that we have, um, it is usable. You can use it to build decentralized networking applications. We also have a protocol called OCAPN that Goblin speaks over. So when you write programs in Goblins, um, by default, you get distributed applications. We have a bunch of tools to be able to more easily debug them, which is often a hard thing. Uh, it's fully transactional. When errors happen, the uh, um, corrupted state rolls back automatically. Um, several other things like that. Um, this year at DWebCamp, we've been demonstrating some interesting things. Um, we sometimes were mistaken for a video game company, um, even though we're a nonprofit building decentralized network tech. And that's because we like to show off some of our tech with video games that we build. Um, and so we have, um, for example, like this little puzzle game and a little space, a couple of space shooters actually. Um, and the, the reason we do this, and so this has been some of our talks this year is like, well, why are we doing this? And then we also had a little arcade where people could try things. You know, why are we doing this thing that's confusing people as to what our mission is? And that's actually because it can be really hard to explain this tech, right? It can be really hard to also to get people excited about it. You talk about something and they're like, it sounds like you're talking to me about advanced computer science topics. But then when you show them actually something, they can directly experience it. If they encounter something that they, they're like, wow, I didn't know that computing could be like this, then that's really powerful. So we're working our way towards social network applications that people can just, you know, um, used for communication, but well, as we're building the lower level pieces of technology, we're trying to actually show them off with things that are applications um, that do something interesting that people didn't really realize. So like some of the games involve actually time travel and things like that. And uh, one, one thing that's interesting is that we didn't have to program um, the time travel into the game logic, we just had to expose it so that users could use it in the interface because our um, system already provides that feature.